Normally I bring you cars from the past, but today I'm bringing you the future. And this is quite literally the future, the Toyota Mirai, or the Japanese word for future. And it's not just a regular EV, this is a hydrogen car which only uses a small nickel hydride battery to help the powertrain along because everything else comes from a fuel cell turning hydrogen into electricity on the move. The main problems with battery electric cars are charging, range and producing the batteries because all of those things are a hassle. They take too long to charge, the range is never enough and lithium is going to run out soon and it's hugely polluting to create it. So if you can cut out those three things but still have a pollution free electric vehicle you've got the perfect solution. An argument against hydrogen has been that it takes power to produce it, but it's actually almost the perfect fuel. It's already an industrial byproduct, and dedicated production can be on site at the point of delivery, so no transport is needed. And it can be produced using local renewables, or to soak up grid balancing surpluses, such as the 1.5 terawatt hours of power that was wasted in 2017. That alone would make 27,000 tonnes of H2, enough to power 135,000 cars for 12,000 miles each. Now, it may look incredibly futuristic and wildly styled with these multi-projector headlights and the big vents and wings and angles, but this is pretty much standard fare for Toyota, so they've really kept it pretty much normal for them. Very briefly, the interior isn't crazily radical as you might expect from a car which is so crazily radical because all the technical cleverness is underneath where you can't see it. The interior is very futuristic Toyota style. They do make everything look a bit futuristic anyway. So the fact you've got carbon fibre inserts in the doors, you've got memory seats which is a great thing. This ridiculously futuristic, very, very Star Trek-y um, panel for your air conditioning. When I said the other day the Toyota Estima looked a bit like a Star Trek next generation shuttlecraft, they've taken it to the next generation with this panel here, which is great. Uh, here you have a inductive charging pad for your phone with USB and audio input. You have obviously a reverse, forward reverse gear shifter because it's a single speed direct drive gearbox. So in theory, it goes fast backwards as forwards, but I think they've probably limited it to something fairly sensible. That would be a bit daft not to otherwise. Um, your keys are in your pocket, so you don't need to put them anywhere, but there is a power on button on your right. And to the left, there's an intriguing H2O button. The idea of that is that you can vent manually the water from the tank, because the only byproduct from this hydrogen engine is water. No nasty gases, just friendly water. But if you don't want to drop that on the floor in your garage or outside someone's house, you can drop it on the floor on the road just before you pull up, which is a great idea, really. Now, this isn't the exciting bit. The exciting bit is taking on the road, so let's go. So yes, I am now driving one of 112 Toyota Mirais currently in the UK. Can you hear that? No. You really can't, can you? You can hear a bit of road noise, a bit of aircon noise. That's kind of it, really. It's very much like any other electric car you have, may have driven before. But the difference is, with this car, you've got no range anxiety at all. And no guilt either, because you haven't been mining lithium. So this car is the guilt-free electric future. With just a single powertrain, this isn't a hybrid, but in many ways this is the truest hybrid because it combines the best of an internal combustion engine with the best of an electric car because I've got silent, pollution-free transport and no worry about how far I can drive either. At the wheel, this feels like any other good mid to high range electric car. Um, you've got fairly light steering, it's um, I'll call it an automatic, but it's basically a single speed direct drive gearbox straight from the electric motor. It's a single motor at the front and everything else is pretty much normal. You've got your standard um, indicator and wiper controls, you've got your big sat nav, your, uh, everything's kind of futuristically designed. This is quite a funky um, display for your heating and ventilation down here, the air conditioning and the, the speedo and range. It's actually fairly conventional. And the problem with lithium powered electric cars is really that lithium. Lithium is a finite resource. We're going to run out of lithium before we run out of oil to power cars. So an alternative solution really had to be found fairly quickly. And for several years, this has looked like the solution. Onboard power generation from a pollution-free 
um, generating plants. That is the ultimate goal, and this, I can't believe it's taken this long to get to it, really. Now this car is configured like a regular three-box saloon, which I, I quite like, actually. I think they look more interesting, I think they look more stylish than an SUV would, would have been. Rather than doing it as a five-seater, they've gone for full luxury four-seater. The, the rear seats are two individual bucket seats with two-stage heating as well, which is very nice indeed. The boot itself isn't that big, unfortunately, because behind the back seats are the hydrogen fuel tanks, which I will come back to in a second. Below the seats themselves are the fuel cell, the power factory for the car. The fuel cell creates electricity, and drives the motor, which is up the front. So it's a fairly simple, in theory, system. Every new technology has got its naysayers and its scaremongers, people who are going to try and worry everyone else into avoiding a new technology because it's terrifying and new. And the thing with hydrogen, people are going to say, look at the Hindenburg, look at that thing exploded. It can't be safe to be sitting on a bomb. Well, look at a petrol tank in a car. If that ruptures in a crash, you are in serious trouble. And look at a lithium battery in a car. Wowee, that can go up all on its own. We've seen Tesla fires, haven't we? The tanks used in this car are carbon fibre pressure vessels. And if you manage to split one of those, then you have got seriously more worries on your hands than just leaking hydrogen. And in the event of an accident, Toyota have thought about this, but they're not daft. They've done this kind of thing before. Believe it or not, hydrogen alone is not explosively reactive. It needs to mix with the air for that 28% of oxygen to become dangerous. So in the event of an accident that needs the tank to vent, it will release through a special valve at a rate low enough for it not to become combustible and then it will dissipate into the air. So the gas coming out won't be in an explosive cloud hanging around the car, it will dissipate literally in seconds and the five kilo load of gas will be gone in under a minute. The interior they've done in this car is very nice indeed. The layout is logical, it's clear, it's got a futuristic look, but no more futuristic than say like a Vauxhall or Chevy Volt. Um, we have our, cleverly they've put the dashboard instrumentation in a single pod in the centre over here, so it can be made left or right hand drive um, with no retooling for that part of the dashboard. It's quite nicely in your eye line as well, which is good. Yeah, the regular controls that you interact with feel like regular Toyota stuff, so there's no massive leap, um, which is something Toyota have done very well, actually, moving from sort of the Prius back in the 90s through to the better hybrids and full electrics over the last couple of generations of cars. They've, they've crept new technology quietly into the market, gained a foothold, gained experience, and made the public more aware and more accepting of this new stuff that they would have thought was alien and strange previously. Now in terms of being an actually usable everyday car, they've really got this spot on with this thing. Um, the electric motor gives the equivalent of 154 horsepower and that will throw it to 111 miles an hour top speed, 0 to 60 in 9.6, although honestly it feels quicker, especially mid-range. And um, overall, you get a range of 300 miles, which is quite impressive really. That's a usable car. Thinks if this thing was on sale right now, I would go and buy one. I'd, I'd buy one tomorrow. This is fantastic. They just need to make an estate version really, and I'm, I'm, I'm sold. But perhaps they could, because they already got the, is it the Auris Estate? Which is a hybrid as it is. Would it be a big leap to turn that into a, well this is a HEV, isn't it? A HEV, hydrogen electric vehicle. It's amazing how quiet this thing is, even, even on hard acceleration, this thing is virtually silent. It's a nice ride as well, it's a little hard. Probably my only two criticisms of this car, as it stands, are the fact the boot isn't very big, but that's a factor of the, um, the fuel arrangement. And the sat-nav feels a little bit out of date compared to some of the newer systems. And I'm told it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, but I haven't actually had a chance to play with that. It has an uncanny ability to pick up speed without you really noticing. Please turn There's right into the next street in a quarter of a mile onto Pleasure Pit Road, then turn left. There's almost no sound as it does it. Now and turn right. There's almost no sound as it does it. Just a 
and just a little sensation as it pushes you back in the chair. Let's go again. Please turn left into the next street. That picked up in 20 miles an hour onto in... Onto Pit Road, then Shut up. turn left. Now... Currently, there are 112 of these in the UK, mostly with fleets like the police in the Metropolitan Police and Surrey and Sussex Police and some other emergency services Please. and because they are mostly kind of for evaluation purposes there's 5,000 in America and about two and a half thousand on now, the turn right shut up and about two and a half thousand on the European mainland the only thing really holding it back from being mainstream is the availability of filling stops. Currently there's about 11 um, fuel stations supplying hydrogen and they're mostly in the southeast but once more of those become available, then um, there's really going to be no stopping this. This is the car of the future today, and I want one now. I want my everyday transport to be a hydrogen car. I want my guilt-free motoring. I want to be able to be a petrol head or hydrogen head. I hope you've enjoyed this trip into the future with me today. If you have, please hit like and subscribe, and join me again next time. See you later.